Hello, it's Joey and today I'm creating a collage with strips of leftover paper. It's a masterboard which I've used to decorate pockets and cards and tags. It has a vintage feel and it's crinkly and there's texture from sewing these lines. Although, as with most of my projects, you can just use glue. I distress some papers with paint to add a grungy effect and I'll share new techniques for this and the paper strip layering too. I have examples of how to use it, like on this double pocket, and I'll share all the steps to make it and my thought processes too. So hit that subscribe button below, there's lots more like this to come. The key supplies that I'm using today are strips of paper that I will layer and glue down and then add some stitches in three types of style. So I've pulled out of a box that sits under my desk some strips of MacBook paper, that's one supply. I've also got some painty papers here that I'm going to use. So these add colour and I've just made these by splashing different shades of blue on an old notebook and tearing them down. I'm also going to use a contrasting simple black and white which I've gathered from ripping up a page in an old crossword book and I also reached out and pulled out some scrapbook pieces of paper, some strips that I had in my box. I have a massive box of offcuts under my desk. I've used them to make snippets and they were a lot of fun but I wanted to use up some of these. So I'm going to combine them, you can see I keep them together on my little peg there so that they don't just go absolutely everywhere. I'm going to combine those strips with a piece of paper that I have distressed. Now you could use a book page. I'm using a page that's left over from, this is a digi from Andrea Allen, Artie Mays. And what I've done, and I'll show you how, is distress it further with some paint. And that's an incredibly simple and a lot of fun. So I've done it in a couple of colours just to test that out. I think I prefer the blue. And I'm also going to be using a piece of paper with a whole load of butterflies on it. And another of the reasons that this masterboard came about was I wanted to create a project with butterflies in it. Spring is coming. I have my lovely daffodils on my desk here. Spring is coming and I really love the, the, the fresh greens and the colours that emerge as the seasons change from winter. So using a piece of paper with just a whole load of butterflies on it is the way that I'm going to bring them in without having to cut them out. So yes, I accept I need to cut them out when I create some of my other projects. So I have a couple of grungy envelopes that require cutting out. This project, even though it's printed on really white copy paper, doesn't require the butterflies to be cut out. I'm going to show you how to incorporate those into this collage and then take the white down so that it merges and blends with some of the other distressed papers on here. I'm going to use a couple of stamps to add some texture and some detail, my little paint sticks and probably my, my favourite stamp. And on some of the items that I make, so I'll show you at the end how I use this, I've added just some sentiment and some extra bits of scrap to make journaling cards out of them. I've got a couple of pocket examples to share with you for how you might like to use this. This is a double pocket, so there's two openings there. And again, I've got a sentiment and some extra little bits on there. So lots of different ways that you can use the masterboard when you've made it and a great way of using up bits of paper, using up leftover strips of paper to have some fun and make this collage masterboard. So the first thing we're going to do is make a wide strip of paper that acts as one of the key focal points in our collage masterboard. And the reason we're doing this is that when we cut it up and use it perhaps to make a journaling card or put on the front of a pocket, we want there to be some key features that stand out that then resonate and coordinate with the other strips of paper that we've used. So I'm going to make two of the strips of paper be a family of design. So I'm going to pick just butterflies as my focal points and have two strips of paper with butterflies on them. And that means taking a piece of paper, I think it's Butterfly in Blue kit from Artie Mays, you can find her channel 
here on YouTube and I will leave a link to her channel in the description box down below. I'm going to augment it with my own hand and splodge some paint on. So I've done it already in blue and gold and I wanted to add this distress effect to take the page down because when it's printed, beautiful though it is, I didn't want this consistency of matte. I wanted it to be something that's really interesting when we look at the embellishment that we make from it. I've done it in blue and gold. I've done it in a brown and yellow and I use quite a bright yellow here and I still think that works. And I've also tried with rather a naughty red. So this one is quite a strong cranberry colour that I had a go at and some gold. So I'll just show you how to do that and they dry very quickly. When it's dry we're just going to rip it down and use a piece of that to layer. I'm going to protect my desk a little bit. What I need for this is an acrylic block and you can see this has got lots of little bits of paint left over on it and I'm going to have a play today with acrylic colours to make this distress. So why don't we use a bit of the blue? This is an Arteza tube of acrylic in the shade sky blue so it's very pretty it has that essence of spring in the colour I think something to lift us out of some of this cold wintry weather so I've put on my block a number maybe 10 dots really tiny dots I'm not putting much on so this is not a squidge and then doodle on top kind of method this is add some tiny amounts and we're going to be quite controlled when we add it to the paper so I've got gold this is again from the set of acrylic colours gorgeous gold you can see that's going down I use that quite a lot in my projects if you wanted to do this with red I have used carmine red I think that was the very pretty crimson that came out on this one and I'm going to take a bit of water one water pot and in case I need it to have my spray of mica and water ready I want to put a few dots of the water just a little drop or two onto my block and then let that wander around the block a little bit spread it out doesn't really matter if it drips on the page Let's shake it about a bit and then I'm going to drag that across and because it dries really quickly I would say just be ready to do your second drag. So let's have this, I may as well go height wise, start from the top. As soon as you feel the paint touching the paper, keep your block off the page. Keep it fairly high above the paper and drag it across. And don't be too alarmed if you get quite a lot of colour. And because it dries quickly, I'm instantly going to add a bit more water. So I'm going to take my spray just add a few delicate mists there because this is quite thin copy paper that I've used and I don't want it to completely warp. All I'm doing now is putting the block down a bit more firmly. I can feel that the paint is quite dry. I'm just dragging it across and I end up with something with blues that I think will add to our collage masterboard when we rip that up. It is quite addictive and I feel that that would work quite well in some other of our junk journal projects. Let me know, how would you use something like that in your junk journaling? Would it be a page in its own right? Maybe you could actually use that for a pocket. I'm starting to think of lots of ideas. My, my brain is whizzing. So I'll set that aside to dry and I'm just going to show you how I tear the page of butterflies or any other collection of focal points that you have. So perhaps you have an encyclopedia with a page of insects on, any form of insects. Perhaps you have a page from an old book that has some other form of focal point that you want to use in this project. It does not have to be butterflies. I'm just going to tear off various of these rows and all I'm doing because they're not placed in a way where they are completely lined up is folding and tearing to divide the white space roughly between whatever comes on this row and whatever comes below and it doesn't matter if it actually 
cuts into one or two of your images, whatever they are, in this case butterflies. As you can see, the butterflies sit across the page so that it's a portrait piece of paper. When I tear these, they're not going to be as long as the length of paper, but that's okay. I'll show you how to layer them up and integrate them so that that doesn't matter. Let's make the most of what we have and adapt and accommodate within our projects. So all I'm doing is making making up some supplies here that I can use when I layer our collage masterboard. So here's a sheet that's been distressed and with this one as well I'm going to tear it up and I'm going to create a piece which is quite dominant on our A4 page. It's deeper so probably about three inches and definitely deeper than some of these more narrow strips of paper that I'm going to be using. I think the key for this collage masterboard is to get some variety into the width of papers that you use. So let me just tear down one of those pretty pages and I am going to tear it, I'm not going to cut it and that is intentional. My thinking, my thought process with this project is that rough torn edges are a bonus. Shall we use this one? So I'm going to, I've halved it and now I think I'll just halve it again. And I'm not being too precious about which parts of that piece of paper I use. I'm going to get four strips out of one piece of A4 from this particular design. And this could be my dominant piece of strip that goes across. It's nice and wide. I've managed to pick up on this one some of the paint that I'd added. In the design this one has a couple of butterflies, not all the way across, and there's a little bit of pink and a little bit of blue in the paper. So that seems like it will go. I'm starting to think about coordination with some of the other pieces of paper that I'm going to layer. So let's get on with some layering of other strips and just build up the page. So I'm picking out some strips of paper that will complement some of those colours that I can see in this piece. So I have pulled out a piece of scrapbook paper. It's not really a design that I'd use in any other project so it's great to be able to use some of this up. And you can see that it does just pull out some of the pink flower that's lightly embedded in the design here. So I'm going to use that. I also think that black and white is a great contrast colour. And it doesn't matter that the strip of paper that I'm using here is just an old crossword page. I just used an old book, tore out page, and ripped it up. So that's something that I'm going to incorporate. I will also have a couple of my butterfly sheets, my strips, to add. And I want some blue from my painted papers. So looking at the blues in these butterflies, all of these bits of paper are different colours. I never, obviously I'm never able to create the same colour twice. This is quite a green, aqua, teal combination. I seem to have a piece here. So I'm just going to pull out one that I feel is a colour that works. And I'm going to start layering these together. So I'll begin with this one the dominant one and I'm going to add that on top of my pink one. So I will put a very fine line of glue down the side of this and just put that on top and I'm not overlapping by very much at all so I'm not taking too much of the pink paper away, I'm not using up too much of that, just enough. We're going to put these strips on top of another piece of paper to give it a bit more strength. So I don't need to overlap it too much in order to create strength and the sewing adds robustness too. So I've got focal point and pink and at the bottom of this one I think I will add my teal painted paper and although it's just minor detail I feel that I want the pink one to go on top of that one. I just like the effect of 
this cascade top underneath underneath and you can see how easy it is as this starts to come together then I'm going to start to move upwards and add my black and white effect and it doesn't matter that I haven't got black and white all the way across there's such interest in this masterboard when it's finished that any of the pieces we cut out are interesting enough to add to embellishments to make pockets, journaling cards, belly bands and tags which I'll show you a bit later what I've done, how I've used it. So I'm going by eye to make it as horizontal as possible each time I add a strip. It's not too far out, it obviously won't be perfect but I'm not too worried about that. We're making good progress. So teal, pink, teal and butterfly, black and white and then I'm going to come to these little images which I will again add this time underneath the black and white strip and I'm doing that because I've got a couple of different sizes sometimes of ones that I'm using so if I put this strip underneath I could also use a strip that's got butterflies of a different size it makes it easier to combine it I think it will look better than if the two different sizes went on top so if you have different sizes to add that's different sizes of butterfly and therefore different depth of strip. My suggestion is that you put the strips behind. So I'll add this time a bit of glue to the top, the upside of these three butterflies and just position my crossword page on top. And I don't think it matters that it cuts a little bit of it off. I'll keep as much as I can visible. I think that's OK. And at this stage, in order to check how I'm doing in terms of all of these strips being horizontal. My tip is have a lined piece of paper behind, put your piece of collage on top of that lined piece of paper and just see if at the top you're broadly horizontal, you're lined up. So lining up at the bottom here just see if you're roughly on target up here. I seem to be rising a little bit to the right, but not too much. I'm not too worried. Now I'm going to add my smaller piece. And to do this, I first of all want to take off as much of the plain white as possible. So limiting the amount of non-image paper that goes into this. So now I've just taken off as much as I can at the side. I'm literally going to just tuck that under. So when I added my glue, I didn't go absolutely to the edge of this crossword piece. And that makes it easier to just tuck an extra piece on here. So I will add a tiny bit of glue to the front of my first row of three butterflies. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the front of my extra piece that I'm adding so I can sit that on top and tuck it behind the crossword row. Let's add some road map. So one collection of strips of paper and in road maps you'll find lots of different colours but different pages because of the topography of a piece of land and an area some will have more green, some will have more pink for roads, A roads, some will have more white, some will have blue. So I'm just going to have a piece of fairly green and that can go on top of the butterflies here. So I really like the fact that I've got green here and some of these green shades in the butterflies. So I'll add some glue to the back of this and that can go on top of my row of butterflies with a bit less covering my smaller piece over here. So really you wouldn't know that that piece was smaller. I lose a tiny bit of the tips of this one, that's okay. And I've got some lovely spring colours through my road atlas coming into my collage. I'm really happy with how this one is building up. We're getting there. Now the height that we want for this collage is the size of the paper that you're going to back it on and I'm going to use a piece from a notebook so I do want it to be roughly the height of this I want to be the width of a piece of A4 so I've got a tiny bit more space and I think what I'll do 
is bring some vintage book pages into this design. Here's one where I added some book page and this is about to be sewn. I quite like that one. This one I used more white papers and I think I prefer bringing some of this old book page in. So I'll just go and find a couple of book pages and then we can stick those in as well. So this is a an old crossword solver and the reason I like this is the very yellowing that's coming around the sides of the papers and it's matte and I like the fact that it's got different fonts in so capitals small and different languages just interesting text numbers all sorts so I'm going to choose a couple of pages from this rip a couple of them down and I really like the fluty edge in fact I am going to I'm going to have fluty edge all the way along so I'll use a couple of these all I'm going to do is add them at the top that can sit behind there I just need a bit more behind here. I have lost my text, but I don't mind because of the colour of the page and that fluty edge. I really like that. So now I have the base of the collage masterboard. All of the layers, the strips of paper are combined. What I need to do now is just trim off at the sides and then I'm going to add some robustness and texture and interest with a few different sewing stitches. So I'll show you how I do that. Because I'm going to cut this collage masterboard up and use it to decorate pockets, to make belly bands and to make tags and journaling cards. I think before I sew it's easiest if I add some extra texture so I'm going to add a little bit more colour and paint and distress and I'm going to use my stamps. So the first thing I need to do is grab my acrylic block again and my water and add a little bit of paint and I'm going to use my mica to just again bring that down add some of the extras that really make these beautiful when we use them as embellishments in our junk journal. So I'm taking my acrylic block which still has some of that paint left on it and I've picked out some of my paint sticks which reflect the colours that I have in my images and the other strips that are toning. So obviously pick colours from your watercolours, from acrylics, whatever you have that go with what you've already got. And I'm going to pick to begin with maybe the light blue and the gold just to add a bit more effect to take down now some of the white from the copy paper and the white from the crossword book page. And to do that, I'm going to use my combination of mica powder and water. So I've shown you that in other videos. I do tend to use it quite a lot now. It's become a rather a staple. And some of the fun, I take my paint stick. I'm going to add that to my acrylic block. I'm going to wet the block and wet my sheet just a little bit. And again, I'm going to do my drag effect, but pressing down quite a lot this time. The layers of paper are at different heights, so you'll get some that grab more of the paint as you sweep across it than others. I'm also going to have a go with, this is absolutely gorgeous. This is a metallic gold that came in the set of, I think it was 24 paint sticks. The brand is Little Brian. I have no sponsorship with them, it's just a product that I really love. So I'm colouring the gold onto my block. A little bit of water just to get that going. It's quite sticky paint and I think that's partly why it works. 
and I'll drag across again. And we did blue and gold in the first piece of paper and all I'm doing is adding a bit more of that on the surface with these lines that get created by using the blocks. So something different from using a paintbrush. It's still a bit damp but that's okay. I'm also going to add texture. So I have a stamp here with some old style script on it and I think I'll use a Ginger Adirondack ink pad, one of my favourites at the moment too. And I'm going to very quickly do the stamping, not re-inking between because I want it to be quite light. So a bit down here, I'm being quite light-handed. I'm intentionally not lining it up, I don't want it to be as if I've created squares over it, but I do think it adds particularly with a butterfly design. And then either now or when you've finished making your belly band or your tag, I would suggest you add finer detail and to do that I'm using my little postmark symbol maybe three or so of those because we're going to cut this up into three or four pieces. I have the wiggly lines that go well with that. Not thinking too much. It is nice if it goes on top of those butterflies though. What do you think? Okay, getting a bit carried away. And then one other piece of um, acrylic stamp that I have is this with really just dots, a merge of dots. I found this on eBay and I'm just going to add ink to that and this really does add texture. Maybe it's easier to see when it's inked up. Let me just show you there. So it's a splodge of dots. So this is great for making paper look like it's sat in a cupboard and you've just found it after a hundred years. How about that? So that can go wherever I like on there. So now the component pieces, the strips, are glued together and decorated. It's time to add those stitches and they're just simple lines in different styles. Nothing complicated, just going up and down. So I'll set up my sewing machine and we can quickly do that. At this stage you have a choice as to whether you want to do the sewing and then stick the collage masterboard onto another piece of paper or cardstock or as in the examples where I've tried it before, I have stuck the whole sheet onto another piece of paper and then sewn on top. It's up to you. It depends whether you want to have this sewing showing or you would like to hide that. It really doesn't matter. It's personal preference. On this occasion, I think what I will do is sew first and then attach it to a piece of paper. So I'll just set that aside and I'm going to start by adding a big zigzag and I want the lines of sewing to really help us look at the focal points. So we had two focal points in this. We had a textured piece that we painted and we had a row of images. So I'm going to start with something really bold and strong at the bottom and I'm going to have something rather whimsical as a style at the top as we move up with a couple of more dainty ones in the middle so that they don't obscure the eye and make you look at these. So I'm bounding the two images with strength at the bottom, interest and whimsy at the top and slightly more dainty ones but still adding texture in the middle. So I'll crack on and do those and we'll see how that takes us to a more finished collage. strong zigzag right at the bottom and now I'm going to move up and just put a running stitch on the main focal point just very close to the pink piece. Running stitch done. I'm going to add a smaller zigzag just in my crossword layer so underneath the second set of images. smaller zigzag and finally at the top I think on this map paper I'm going to add that whimsical style I don't know what it's called 
So I'm going to choose this one that flutes up and down just because it seems to go with the, the butterfly design. So I've got something very undulating as a stitch style here, something different. And the thread that I've used is just a, a deep aqua green in a nylon thread. It's just happened to be what I had. I'm going to trim off the little threads and then it's time to attach this to another piece of paper just to give it a little bit more strength. So as I said we could have attached this and glued it to another piece of paper before we sewed it and that's completely your choice. I do like, I like the crinkle when it's all done. Let's see what it's like if we just glue this on and it does mean that we then have just all of this backing hidden but that might be something you like. You do also obviously have a choice as to whether you would like to back this onto another big piece of book page. You could map this onto map paper and I think using map paper on the back of a collage masterboard like this would be absolutely lovely too. I'm going to use this to decorate the front of a large pocket, a bit like some of the pockets and pouches I made a while ago with some extra pouches on the front. I do have a video showing how I've made some of those big pockets step by step, so if you fancy making some more pockets, check that one out. I've just added some fairly liquid glue and we have a collage masterboard ready to cut down and just use in any of our projects they want that we want in our junk journaling. I'll show you what I've done to cut up this collage masterboard and use it on the front of pockets. So I have a couple of pocket designs. I have a journaling card and a tag and a couple of belly bands. But it would be really interesting to hear how you use your collage masterboards in your journaling and junk journaling. This one is dry, I made it earlier. This one's still slightly damp from today. So I'm going to cut this one up and just talk you through what I've done in making those embellishments. So the first thing I'm going to do is halve it. So widthwise, I'm going to steal half of it. And I know that I made it A4 in size. So that means if I halve it, I know that I can get two big pockets out of it. I'm pressing down to cut through, it may not go through the thread. Have we managed to do it? No. So I will just snip between. And you remember we didn't go round the outside of this collage masterboard. So unlike the collage covers to the junk journals that we did the other day in a previous video. So if you remember these, we did collaging and then we sewed around it and used stitching to add interest made a few of those. Again there's a video on my channel if you're interested in collaging covers for junk journals. This one doesn't have a boundary to it so what I've been doing is just folding over a piece of A4 paper and it doesn't matter if it's been written on, attaching that to the front so in this case I can glue it, a bit of glue round three sides and you can see that it doesn't matter that we could see all of the gubbins and all of the threads and all of the sewing. Not that it's ugly, I actually really like it. But because I'm going to add it to the front of an A4 piece of paper that I've simply folded in half, I will hide all of that. And all I've done for a pocket is then just sew around. So I like to add a little bit of zigzag interest. I've sewn around on three sides, which means that I get a pocket with a pouch at the front here behind the collage master board that's been stuck on and sewn. And I also get a pocket between the sheet of paper that I've folded. So that's quite an interesting one. And I think it really does allow us to benefit from the pretty sewing and the detail that we added. On this one I've added a little bit of Amazon packaging paper or was it Ikea which I stamped again with my stamp and added a little bit of gold paint to bring it to be consistent with the rest of the page. So this is the sheet 
just a little bit of packing paper stamping on it and some of that gold just the paint stick so just the paint stick to add some of that effect and then I ripped a piece off and I added a sentiment and I did something similar with the tag I've got a little bit of the packing paper and I've got a sentiment and I've taken a couple of pencils from my watercolour pencil set in the colours that are in the rest of the tag and I've just gone around the sentiment to emphasise it I've done that on a few of them and on the journaling card which I also think works quite well again I've got a nice bold sentiment gone around it with my pencils and added my packing paper you can see the paint that we added right at the beginning distress and as a little bit of mica spray I think on this one so that's got space for writing on and that could go in a really nice large pocket in a junk journal and this is my collage masterboard made with strips of leftover paper I have lots more collage projects coming up so do hit the subscribe button so you don't miss them and give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video because that really does help Check out my video where I make these cute collage index cards. Come back next week. I hope to see you soon.